Good evening, Bob. So this is our after action report on uh, scenario 12, the road to wills. Good evening. So uh, we'll start with your commentary. Or should I start? Okay, as a general, general concept, I, I tried to keep, I, I wanted to get lines of sight onto board um, one to try and bring artillery in to try and slow down the advance. I, I placed mines on obvious advance routes and a couple of not so obvious advance routes. And I had uh, got my artillery requests out there in the hills because that's all they could see from uh, where they were. Um, but mainly, yeah, the defense at this stage is just uh, artillery. On, the concept is the artillery on board two, try and uh, bog them down on board three as long as possible. And then I have the wire and all of my uh, AT guns and everything else set up on board one for the, uh, the, the bunker, <laughs> the last stand against the wall to try and keep them from leaving the board at the end. Uh, and as, as it turned out, <clears throat> well, we'll see what's going. We'll see what transpires. <laughs> okay, uh, on my end, uh, I was overly cautious in uh, advancing my troops. Um, the group of, um, of infantry in EE nine, instead of taking the main road, um, okay. since um, since uh, uh, armored fighting vehicles are not subject to snow rules. Uh, they would uh, basically be advancing at 12 movement factors or less uh, uh, and still be able to make up uh, some time with, without having to incur any dangers of mines. And Bob, I was uh, right to be cautious because the M10 that was on Hill 621 did have a line of sight to uh, Board 4 and he got one of my tanks. I was lucky he did not go for any tank that had a, a leader passenger on it at the time. So my leaders survived the first phase. Then that left me with a lot of uh, untransported infantry. And I advanced them the best I could. And I reserved uh, the 6 plus 1 leader to try to uh, assist the uh, infantry that were to enter the board on turn 2. Um, the ones that didn't have any uh, any uh, leaders or transport to advance as quickly as possible as well. Now, this is my first surprise in the game that, that you didn't more aggressively move to get rid of that roadblock right there that I put right up front. I didn't expect that to last very long, but I, I did expect you to go to move uh, some of that infantry on the tanks right up to it, dismount, and take care of that roadblock right away. Now. I'm, I put those concealed troops there to try and, and dissuade you from that. that. That actually worked quite well, but uh, I, I really expected you to, to be more aggressive against that roadblock to try and get uh, get more of your infantry forward faster onto two. I was really surprised how long you spent on board one. Mm. And I right, thought that you had put the mines up, up front. <laughs> Now we're going to be we're going to have all of your uh, entering stuff coming up here, so we'll try and fast forward through that. Sure. Um, quickly, let's see. Uh, wait a minute. Why are we not advancing here? Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, page down. Page down. Why are we not? Did I open the wrong file? Should I pause? This should be. Let's pause while we figure out the technical difficulties. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out why. Oh, am I I'm in the wrong? Let's see. Ah. Okay, we're recording again. Technical guild difficulties have been solved. Okay, here we go. Blank. This radio. Okay, we're doing the radio checks, placing artillery requests, and George is beginning beginning to move here on board two in the area of the roadblock. Moves the truck out of the way. Yeah, you'll note that, um, let's see, okay, there we go. All right, moving his tanks into the hills and advancing along the southern route here. Moving through the, the hills. All right, okay. There he gets, whoop, there we go, okay. See, rearrange.
arranging the guys entering. There we go. Moving up the road. Good. Okay. Uh, now where we are, 2-4 crew moves upward. Uh, this is where you're getting your stuff all arranged to move on the board. On, do, 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 do. Oh, okay. Um, are we on, okay, stacking all your stuff up here. I can pause uh, that while, uh... Okay, here we go. You're moving onto the board. Okay. This is, okay, this is where you bring your mortars onto the board back there. I'm really surprised they, the scenario designers put your trucks there, because they don't move through the snow at all. No. Trucks are subject to double, uh movement to snow movement unlike the APVs, armored fighting vehicles. Okay. That's where I lost my first uh, radio. Right. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. First line moves off board. Okay, we're moving whoops. Yeah. Whoops. Oh they're they're just following the guys in front of them just to save time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here come the trucks. Alright. And okay, your mortars are on the board. Now you're moving, let's see, over here. question marks around here. I don't understand what's going on here. Okay. Phase updated to axis advance phase. Okay. So now we're advancing, getting a roadblock. So there's really, there's no defense here at all because I don't have line of sight. I had my, I had one tank up front early to try and take an early shot and then bugged out because I knew he was going to be facing a, anything I put out there would be facing a whole bunch of uh, armor in the, uh, in his uh, following prep fire, advancing fire, and then his, and his defensive fire would just shoot me to heck. Um, okay, we're in allied rally phase, um, checking artillery accuracy, <laughs> roll of five. I think I missed just about every single art our, our, artillery request. Um, yep, yeah, one for nine. Yeah, that was the, the he, Jackson actually put one down there. That was uh, one of the things I did that actually turned out quite well, was putting an artillery spotter in the church steeple, or actually I moved him to N1 eventually, because that's a better position, uh, so that I could keep the road under observation for artillery the whole time, and that ended up causing George no end of problems. German radios are checking those. Okay, he's actually putting an artillery request down. Um, allied movement phase... Um, yeah, this is where I moved. <laughs> That's where I moved him to a better position in the church. Um, let's see, we don't need to move. Let's see, we're looking at American stuff. Here we go. Okay. Two, eight one Thornton is retreating from his original spot. I had him out there to try and spot for artillery, but I realized it just it was not going to work out, so I had to retreat him to find someplace else to go. Moved a half track up there, picked him up, and got him out of there. Actually, I set a half track up there next to him to get him out of there because hmm. I knew he wasn't going to be there very long. And originally, I had intended to move him to the front of the village there to, to defend, but that didn't work out real well. Uh, two in, moving from two in five. Let's see, two in five. Oh. Two in five, not three in five, two in five. Here we go. Moving my M10 back. Yeah, because I, I move into, a, I tried to take sniper positions and then, you know, anticipate where you're moving, get into a sniper position where you weren't going to be able to shoot at me when I left. Because <laughs> I did not want you shooting me full of holes in the defensive fire phase. Okay, phase updated to Allied Advance phase. Um, move on fire markers, okay. And, let's see, okay, now we're in the, let's see, 
Axis rally phase. Checking the radios. Uh, moving the artillery. You can see we've got uh, uh, on board, I'm using the onboard artillery quite a bit because I, I did not get a lot of artillery modules. I got, uh, I'm supposed to have three modules. I got two of one, three of another, and two of the, two of the third. George did much, much better in his determinations. He got, what, four shots of each of his two modules? And yeah. you get bigger ones too. <laughs> yeah, and but the offboard artillery played a key role in block in blocking my movement, and it was uh, continuous fire for effect. And here we can see um, you got a guy trying to move up the road, and there's on, off, onboard artillery right in front of him that's that's making him think twice about it. Yeah, you notice that uh, roadblock went away pretty quick. That uh, I think, <laughs> I think we did that wrong. I think that roadblock should have been there a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay, tank moving. Here we go. The, the tanks are already off of the road, and I don't understand that. He that would have used the tanks to look for mines. Ah, which he found. He just exactly. found the first of the mines. That's why they were off the road. <laughs> <laughs> found the first of the mines and it didn't do any good but there you go um that uh, he's let's see oh page down okay and he's right down there um and that's okay that's as far as we got on this log file you need to hit pause and we'll get another log file okay hold on one second okay we're back okay. on to the third log file all right, we just finished moving your tank up to uh, L1 there. Mm -hmm. And let's see, okay, now you're moving your Stug on the southern track here from, uh, what's what, that, uh, 2, 2U7. Mm -hmm. um, and you're about to find another mine there. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a mine there because initially you told, when, you, when I saw that group of infantry uh, ad advancing, here you had told me uh, I wasn't expecting that, but uh, why weren't you expecting th those troops to to take the flank? I well once once the uh, the road I would say I was expecting you to move some troops on tanks because I mean, you had to get them across as quickly as possible, and yeah. you had to use every piece of every vehicle you had to carry troops to get as many people across as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So. And I was also expecting you to, to use as many advanced routes as possible. Um, and so, but I just tried to I tried to identify critical choke points and put mines in them. Mm. Well, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. And we actually let's see. No, no, we didn't didn't get him. Um, no. no I, I mean, it needs a two or a three to to do to you know, for the mind to have an effect. So really doesn't have much of a chance, but, okay, here we go, Stug 3, he's moving along, yeah, we're just moving the guys off of there for clarity, and there we go, and he's moving this way, why, he, why, I mean, he sees one mine and then takes off in a different direction, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I should have moved a, a 10 minus 2 liter up there. And have it cleared with a six or less, but on the other hand, if I had moved my ten minus two liter uh, in, up front, right off the bat, you had your M10 there that could have taken a, a good putt shot at him and eliminated him. Right. Yeah, I had the, I had the M10 there waiting for you to move up onto those second level hexes, but you stayed on the first level, so I couldn't shoot it. Actually, my ten minus two liter came in on the second turn, but. I, you, you had, I believe, succeeded in getting one of my uh, leaders and his radio on, on board four in the first uh, phase. Uh, no, did your radios are right now in uh, FF5 and G0 there. It's, you can see it because of the flags on the radio, the, the radio contact flags. Okay. <clears throat> um, like there, <laughs> he's he's moving. Oh, he's, he's getting out of the half track now, so he can move the half track easily. Okay. And right, we go, and he's going to go around the 
So you dare just knock at the with the onboard artillery knocking you off the road and up into the hills slows you down quite a bit, which was good. Mm -hmm. that, that that part worked out. See, and they're all stacked up there. See, it, it would have been wonderful if I could have got some big artillery in there, but just there, you couldn't see get enough guys into position to spot. I might even put two radios in the church next time. Let's see, okay, we're moving along here. So I thought maybe the uh, Facebook uh, members should not vote in favor of a rematch. <laughs> on, to, <laughs> <laughs> on to scenario number eight. Okay, and we got okay. We're going to be moving around your mortars over here. That's that's that was hell for them. Just being stuck in that snow back oh, there. Yeah. Okay, here comes your second wave of stooges. And these were, these definitely ended up not being any fun for me. Um, okay. Oh, there's a broom bar. No, broom bars ended up not really having any kind of effect. Okay, here you are. Let's see. Oh, you managed to take out my, uh, my troops over there. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, I did? Yeah, my my uh, concealed troops over there by the roadblock. You, you, you danced next to them, and of course oh, they yes. didn't shoot back <laughs> because they were they were dummies mm -hmm. um, but yeah I mean, it, it did slow you down you, you you had to deploy to get them you had to take the troops off of the tanks you couldn't just ride all the way in so it was it worked out it, it did what it's supposed to do um, let's see oh and he's kind of go this way and try the mines and six no one two the mines get some bang and yeah, first yeah, he's he's immobilized. He's no. Now the crew abandons it, and now it becomes a wreck. Okay, then <laughs> the crew gets out and hits the mines and the snake eyes. There were a lot of snake eyes in this game. Hmm. Uh, okay, defensive fire created in three W five. Okay, I'm gonna be shooting from the hill here on board three to yeah this is uh, constantly tried to keep things in line of sight on board too that's a, one of the handy one of the things about chasing you up off the road into the hills is that it gets you up above those all those trees that block a lot of line of sight so that we can uh, see more stuff fortunately from here from two this is my priest um range 21 uh six to hit hits four to kill five nope Um, then George is uh, shooting back. Let's see, okay, moving fire markers, advanced phase. Okay, and now, okay, here we go. Player turn, US radios, checking the radios. Okay, accuracy, missed accuracy again, and it fell out of, out of line of sight. Hill. Uh, brings his down, Jackson, let's see, already millimeter, already millimeter mortar, times two, okay, this is my mortar landing, uh, onboard mortar landing on L1, and again, it's a, the, 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 they have no chance against tanks, but that was the only thing I had to shoot at the time. Uh, and then the 105, so 105 is really handy, those, those, did a really great job. Hmm. Um, and again, having that onboard artillery was was really crucial. And they're all the way back on board one. On board, uh, one. So this, uh, there's no way they're going to get reached until the very end phase. I uh, got a one morale check here with my 105s. Breaks a unit. Um, then we have prep fire created in 3W5. Yep, this is shooting at that tank again with my, I think that's a priest, right? Yep, that's my priest. Um, and I don't know whether I'm using heat. Yep, heat shot. Here we go. And bang. Well, <laughs> good news is I hit. Bad news is I'm now out of heat. So, and I killed him with the heat. Um, no crew survival. Thornton continues his boogie to the back and I want to try it he's one of my radio guys so I think right 
No, he's not. He's he's just back there trying to again. I'm ex you can see I'm deploying things a little bit forward. I've got even against infantry, so I'm, I'm expecting this ma massive wave of infantry to come out of board two at any time. I'm trying to set up machine guns and all that to try and take slow down the infantry, but pff, it just never never arrived. Um, here we are in the, the half track that brought in back originally. Yes, half track goes screaming on back. Originally, I thought about uh, moving some guys from the back to the front because things were going slower than I thought, but I uh, ended up not being necessary. Here's my M10 uh, redeploying to try and, and cover the, the second level hills that he's moving towards. Um, let's see, okay. Allied route phase. Now, the problem is that wreck negates the road advantage and slows me down again. And that's what I wanted to avoid, <laughs> but I couldn't avoid it by taking the hills. Yeah, that, 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 that was one of the things I kept on trying to do with the Artie was either was try to uh, you know, put the Artie on the road. It would slow you down. If I managed to break anything, then it would uh, or you know, kill a truck or something like that. And yeah, it, creates, it creates slowdowns on the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was what uh, everyone said before the game started was, oh, the road is critical, the road is critical. That's why I was really surprised you abandoned it right off the bat. But you did keep enough stuff on the road to where I could slow you down. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't have any problem with radio contact until the very end of the game. Um, I just could never, <laughs> I could not get my artillery to land uh very often. Uh, the onboard stuff was good. The, I, I managed to get that on pretty good, but the uh, offboard stuff just never really did anything. This tank down here is really good on the south side of board two that made it through the mines the first time. He ended up causing me all kinds of problems. And we're just moving the infantry off the uh, tank to, to clarify things, the remaining passengers. These Moving these half tracks up into the mountains did not end well for, for George. No. That that ended up costing him. Yeah. Uh, when you get when you start getting up into level two and level three, all of a sudden all of my artillery spotters can see it from all the way across the board. They're no longer limited just to hitting the road with little stuff and so the mine failing again, some failing to stop a tank again. Okay, and then he's sending more troops into the up into the hills. Um, let's see, yeah, that was moving infantry through my, uh, on war artillery. That wasn't a good idea. Um, but see, the, just that mine slowing everything down. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, George had a really tough time with mine clearance. That was, that was, uh, really sad to watch. Okay, and then we have everybody moving up here. This is all the stuff in the back. But you see, just, just that artillery and uh, <clears throat> mines is causing a lot of problems back there. And he's just, we get a major traffic jam uh, forming on the back of the, at the back of the German formation there. All right, um, let's see. Checking, okay, well, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Oh, we're doing artillery again. This is, uh, Axis defensive fire fit. No, we, I must have forgotten to advance it. Let's see. Oh, it's defensive fire face. No, this is when my artillery is landing on the guys who moved through there, and that, yeah, broke a couple of guys. That was rolling through 105 millimeter artillery. In fact, two two shots of 105 millimeter artillery uh, was was painful for his troops. Um, now he's okay advancing around the FFE. Um, and moving forward, oh, this is advanced phase, sure, okay, and now we're at Axis Close Combat Phase, so we're checking for artillery accuracy, and that's it, but you see the artillery is staying right there in, uh, in board two, trying to keep him, at, you know, trying to do as much damage and slow him down as much as possible. That spotting round from Jones there that I just put down is really going to come into play here in a moment. That's actually the first of the big uh, artillery actually tried to use the offboard. And we need to go to a new log now. 
Okay, let's pause and uh, so you can load it. Okay, we just loaded the uh, new log file and we're recording again. Okay, we can go ahead. Oh, I don't see it in there yet. Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on. Join the room. There you go. Oops. Stoner thought of the day, right? <laughs> okay, so we're at uh, turn four allied rally phase. Now, let's see. Okay, the, the action is still right here on the joint between two and three. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The joint between two and three. That's not a pun, by the way. There he goes. Now I like player turn. Okay, so first off, we have George rallying troops. <clears throat> now we're checking the radios. And okay, now we're let's see, off board. Okay, we're moving off board artillery. That this Jones FFE here does does end up doing damage. Uh, and basically, that, that I put that there, one, to attack that uh, half-track right there, but also to block off M5 and O5. I really wanted to keep him from get, cresting that hill and running down the other side. I wanted to send him either back through those trees or farther back to P5 and O6, and just make him waste all those movement points, moving backwards instead of forwards. But trying to shut, uh, just basically trying to shut down the front half of that uh, back hill there. My advice uh, to any player playing the Germans in scenario 12 with respect to this hill is avoid it like the plague. Uh, <laughs> the reason why is if you look at L3, M4, and N3, half tracks cannot go through woods. So in order to bypass this crest, will cost you five movement points to get up to the, to the highest point. Then going downhill is easy breezy, but then you'll go downhill again, and then uphill again, that's 10 movement factors. If you go around through the, th through the two side-by-side -side cliffs in L, between L, uh, on the sides of L4 and L5, so you're going up the crest, plus five, downhill it's fine, uh, L5 is the same level, then you're going downhill, uphill again, plus five. And if you want to go into the two hexes that have line of sight, uh, are the last two level three hexes that have line of sight, all the way down to the other side of the board, that's another five movement factors. And if you forget the, that the movement, that the victory condition is to exit, um, to exit your squads off the west edge of the of board one, you've just expended. 10 movement factors that could have been better spent on the road or clearing mines. So, I don't know how you feel about that, Bob. But, oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I was happy to have you playing around the hills. That's why, <laughs> that's why I put the FFE there on the on the road to send you up in the hills, and then I just used the, the I used my tank destroyer and and my other artillery to basically try and make you go back and forth and around. And if I, if I could make you go up and down the hills, like going going from level one to level two to level level one again, just wasting all of those uh, extra movement points going uphill. That was that, that was fine for me. That's slowing you down. That was the whole goal. Hmm. All right. Let's see. And then he's my uh, onboard mortars over there, trying to take out the road again. There you go. Um, and he's got okay. He's working. Oh, it's okay. The yes, the uh, the FFE comes down. Um, let's see, and breaks the guys in the half track. Now, at this time, we were under the impression that broken guys couldn't stay in half track, so they immediately abandoned. Um, and they have to abandon other AFVs, but not half tracks. And that was a mistake we made throughout this game. Uh, and eventually, you know, we'll, we'll fix it next time we play, but this time, that was a mistake we were making all the way through. And here, the Americans are removing moving the, uh, yeah, I, um, I'm still deploying here. Now, the, the Americans that I had up front, I had, I had Americans here on uh, board two in these trees by the roadblock, <clears throat> ready to 
you know, go, as, as these tanks came barreling down here, checking for mines and going to find the roadblock and take it out, I wanted to, wanted to have somebody here because he would have to deploy troops to sit there by the roadblock or have a tank sit there by the roadblock to try and clear it. And I wanted to have troops there with a bazooka and a machine gun to take care of those troops or take care of that tank. But it was taking so long, and he had the other guys in the hills that I was afraid at this point that he'd basically come down the road and pin me and sweep around from the hills and, and they'd get stuck in those trees. And I could not afford to lose, what, uh, a third of my squads pinned in those trees for the rest of the game. So I decided that uh, I'd move them into their half tracks, uh, which I had pre-positioned right behind them. Uh, and bug them out now before they before they got trapped, even though they had not fulfilled their mission. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Okay, uh, M10 is bugging out again because again we have tank. He's got a tank on his right and a tank on his left, and I do not want him to get shot in the side. So I'm going to run away. So I'm trying to keep everything in front of me. And he goes run back here. Uh, yeah, and I, I had a real brain fart later in the game that really cost me. But yeah, those are the, those two, the tanks right there are in a great position to defend the road because they can see everything on level one hexes over there. They can't see the road, and they can't see any level one stuff, so which I completely forgot a little bit later on. You're talking about but the M10 and the X4 and... The M10, yeah, the M10 and the priest on, on the hill over here on, on uh, board three, mm -hmm. where I just put that, where that M10 just moved. They can, they can see all the level one stuff on board two. They can see the level two stuff, the level three stuff, all great. They can't see anything on level one, which uh, which is important to keep in mind. <laughs> so we're talking about... I forgot that, then made a bad mistake. Yeah, that allowed me to advance whatever troops that had survived the mines and the artillery uh, easily. Out of LOS, yeah, another another artillery failure with my onboard. Uh, let's see, and then uh, OB mortar, yeah. So uh, these, I'm losing uh, artillery spotters as as I had to relocate an artillery spotter because uh, things were getting dangerous for him. Uh, okay, moving Axis player turn, checking the radios. And we've got new artillery requests down on the level three hill. Because, <clears throat> uh, again, I had just put Hill, who had been on uh, DD2 spotting from there. Um, let's see, yeah. Um, I moved him out and down to M3. And the only thing he can really see from there uh, that, I, that I was pretty sure he would be able to see from wherever I moved him to after the turn was uh, level three, so I put him. I put his artillery request on level three. I also put Jackson's artillery request up there because he could see level three pretty easily. It gives me a good margin for error. Uh, if I, what if, as was almost guaranteed in this game, it didn't land where it was supposed to, at least I'd have one or two hexes in just about any direction before it would go out of line of sight. Uh, the dice almost always managed to find a place where it went out of some out of line of sight. Though, so. Once I got him on the board, everything was great. But getting them on the board was a real pain. All right, your tank moves into the trees. I was surprised at how much or how easily you just moved into the trees. You didn't even think twice about it. Just plowed right through. Okay, range 17 needs... Oh, yeah, I took a shot at you. I had lined up specifically to shoot at you as you went through those trees. It came out of that hex. <clears throat> any shoots, any misses. Mm -hmm. That's why he was there. That was his job, and he just blew it. All right, then we have the, uh, um, let's see, still 17 moving. Okay, yeah, so I'm firing, I guess this is from the, uh, this must be from the M10, who also missed. <laughs> um, let's see, okay, your Stug found some mines. That didn't do any good. Um, okay, going past the... Going past the, going through the wreck there and then up onto the hill. I'm not sure why you did that instead of continuing on down the road. I don't, don't know. Because you had a mine down there in F1. <laughs> well, you know, but you didn't even know about the mine in G2 yet. <laughs> the mine's all the way over in FF. I mean, no, or in uh, what? Uh, F1. Yeah, F5. Oh, wow. F5? Oh, yeah, but you did have a mine in F1. It was kind of an obvious place to put a mine. I had, well, it was actually 
G2, but yeah. <laughs> okay, G2. It was kind of obvious. I, that's why I was avoiding the, the rogue. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, so then half track. See, this is again. I, I had that priest up there to try and shoot at the half tracks as we're coming up on that level one hill, but they all had to shoot at that tank, and the tank didn't do any good. So then, all of a sudden, he's just rolling everybody. Uh, I mean, where did where'd the tank go? That's interesting. Oh, that's where he kept moving. Yeah, one one tank became. Well, Alright, uh, let's see. Trees, oh, that's, you moved into the trees, the tank and the trees up there, it was as far as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, you moved into the trees on uh, M4 there, <coughs> to M4 and got immobilized. That's one of the few times, see, you did, I think, that was the only one of yours that did that. I think you don't, I don't think you had many problems with the trees. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that was as far as we got with that log file. Go okay, so let's and pause and... Load up the other log file. Okay, we're back in business. Okay, we're here in Axis Turn 5 movement phase. Let me... Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see, tank moving 0204, board 2. Okay, 0204, we're going to 0204. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is. these are all the guys up on the, near the level 3 that are now going to have to deal with that FFE that I put on the hill. Mm-hmm. So they be, they start bailing out to the south, right? Yep. Not Think quite. One actually, I did. I one think action. I I did a mistake here. Uh, I did one stupid mistake in this play. Utterly stupid. Yeah. This is a moving the infantry off of the tank to just mm -hmm. simplify the movement of the tank. Uh, is, okay. Uh, we go move through the wreck, and there he finds the mine. Bang. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course. And, Mine goes 11 and 4, so that doesn't do any good. But at this stage, I'm kind of glad I got my guys out of those trees, because at this point, with that, with his canister, he probably would have shredded them. Hmm. <clears throat> As it turns out, I, I didn't, I completely forgot about the canister until he mentioned it later. Uh, okay. Um, and all those guys that are with him probably would have had no problem jumping to the trees and killing them. Okay, here's another... Half track, and he actually, I think, braves. Is he the one that actually braves the FFE? I think so. Yep. He moves into the FFE here and moves into the FFE again and gets hit with a snake eyes. There you go. See, so yeah, another mm -hmm. one of the snake eyes uh, in that hex. No. Yeah. That was utterly stupid on my end. I should have moved back onto the road and uh, I had a clear, uh, clear movement to advance up to H2. Pure idiot. Especially Especially with your what you had a nine ten two on there nine two on there, mm -hmm. yeah that was that was one of your key leaders and your radio I think right mm -hmm. was there a radio there too no yep, just yep, like there machine was. Panzer Shrek. there was a radio as well Tinum had a radio uh, oh, that's right you pulled them off yeah did ten two and a radio yeah uh, that was uh, that was a big loss right there it mm -hmm. was a, that was a real and uh, that was a risk I don't think I would have taken. And that's a risk I shouldn't have taken. And then Ritzelberger <laughs> learns his lesson. This. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, you don't send 10 twos and things like that. That's what the seven O's with the radio are for. <laughs> uh, okay, and moving down. See, deciding not to not to challenge the FFE, that's good. But still, they're going to have to deal with the onboard artillery eventually. Mm -hmm. The problem with the onboard artillery is I couldn't, I could just couldn't move it fast enough to keep up with his movement. He was actually moving a lot faster than I could get my artillery reoriented. You can only relocate the artillery three hexes once you've got it coming down. And when he's advancing four to six hexes a turn, it's uh, kind of tough to keep the artillery oriented on them. Let's see. All right. So we'll get to everybody moving back, moving up. Okay, we'll go through this real fast. Yeah, see, I was expecting him to, I was expecting you, George, to keep more, uh, more of your tanks on the second level so that you could keep my two 
buy two tanks from being on first and second level and causing you problems. You were always going to have more guns than I was, so I, and I just couldn't stay out in the open. And then the most I was going to shoot at any one time was of yours is one. And, well, if you've got three tanks out there and I take one down, then the other two kill me. The, the way the uh, the way the Americans took Germans down in World War II historically, actually. And the way I was thinking about it was uh, it was futile for me to stay on those uh, on the high level uh, hexes. I wanted to advance as far as I could uh, and eliminate the tanks and get in a position to interdict the your reinforcements that were coming on the west edge of Board One. Yeah, it kind of, what transpired was really weird. I was not able to eliminate your tanks, but something else happened. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll keep the listeners in suspense, the listeners and the viewers in suspense. So you got your, uh, yeah, you got your stug on the ground there. You've got another one coming up. I don't know if this is where I had my brain fart or not. Um, it's about there. <laughs> But it's coming up here fairly soon. Okay, this is Axis route phase, no routes, and the Axis advance phase. <clears throat> okay, everybody moving around. Da, 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 da. And close combat phase, where we take our picture, and it's allied, allied rally phase. So we're checking for, let's see, um, George is uh, rallying troops here, checking for radios, all good. German radio is good. Um, see and let's see he tried to put an art, art artillery request on but it went out of its line of sight i've got my artillery requests moving i think actually yeah i think i'm actually a big couple of them stick here jones goes to spotting around because everybody moved away and he's way at the far end of the board he's actually over on board one so he can't see a whole hell of a lot unless it's unless it's fairly high until things start getting closer. So uh, he's just going to keep that one in reserve. And Jackson brings his 105 down the road again. Um, Hill is limited in where he can put stuff because, again, he's in a half track waiting to load onto a half track down there behind a building, behind a hill. Uh, he's got very limited uh, view. Um, and and he, I have to put it someplace where not only can he see it now, but he's going to be able to see it wherever I move him. So, um, let's see. Okay, rallying phase. Let's see. Oh, this is oh shot two. This is uh, oh this is my turn. So my artillery is coming down as prep fire. That's right. So my 105s just hit his half track and broke. It looks like. Uh, you know, I broke another leader mm -hmm. and killed a squad because it's, it's two 105s coming down a half track. Uh, so I get two shots at 16, um, 16 even against the infantry and a um, uh, minus one against the half track. Like, wow, it's uh, even quite against something. the infantry. The infantry should have been a plus two, right? Um, I don't. Think so against the FFE. They might. I don't know. I don't think we were. I don't think we were playing it that way. But they might. But let's check that. Okay. I think. If, I think. I don't think they get the plus two. Um, I could be wrong. Because the uh, the uh, the guys on tanks don't, and they get a plus two if you're coming across the uh, um, uh, covered arc. But um, I don't think that the, uh, the plus two applies to FFE. We're gonna have to check that. That might have been something we were doing wrong. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, our, my uh, my forward troops there are still continuing to bug out to the town now that their their job up front is done. Now here's yeah, this is where I my brain fart. George moved his stug down there into two e two e six, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh my goodness, he's going to shoot my tanks on the hill. Uh, completely forgetting about the fact that he doesn't have LOS to the either one of those hexes. The whole reason I put him in those hexes was because nobody on the first level, virtually nobody on the first level, has, has on ground level, has line of sight to those two hexes. But I just completely forgot that and immediately panicked and sent these tanks flying off in the middle of nowhere. And they ended up being badly out of position from then on. And it, it, things went downhill from there for these tanks. Uh, they, they, the, putting them out of position was the, the, the least of their worries eventually. 
I don't know where that where that four six seven came from. First line, see there it is in the log, George. That four six seven we were wondering about. Mm hmm. Yeah, it it, it just showed up. It moves off board to off board. I don't. So it doesn't say where it came from. Huh. Uh, it's probably from uh, some half to hex. Um, okay, we're moving on fire markers. Um, okay, Thornton, DM. All right, so over here, we're in an allied close combat phase, so we're taking our picture, end of the log file. All right, that's the end of turn, let's see, it was the end of turn five. Half-track so. passengers are only affected by the destruction of the vehicle. Attacks versus non-half-track passengers utilize the same rule applied against their vehicle, only it is modified by minus two. That's non-passengers, moving in the open, modifier of above. So there is no modifiers against half-track passengers. They're only affected by the destruction of their vehicle. I thought that was mine. No, this is 46.52. Yeah, I'll, to, I'll check that out. That might have been a serious problem that we had with this. 46.54. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Uh, the... Uh, Okay, so we need a new log. Okay, hold on. Let's pause and roll it up to the new log. Okay. Cord. Okie doke. So we're now into turn six axis rally phase. Uh, moving the turn counter right. Okay, oops. And we're talking the German radios, US radios, all good. Again, we had no problems with the American radios until the very end of the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, George is putting a uh, artillery request on the church. Okay, good call. Let's see. Good call. There you go. Uh, and let's see. Oop, and it just went away. It's, a, uh, it's not time for it to go away yet. Okay. Oh, I see. There was there moved too many. Uh, all right. Now moving my spotting arounds <clears throat> to uh, like yeah. Trying to protect the road here. Um, hill is. I don't know why I'm putting an FFE on the hill. Let's see. Oh, that was to try and keep. Uh, oh, is that what? Does that one was, No, I don't know why I put an FFE up there. No, because it's on board, so it doesn't really matter. Trying to keep infantry out of there. I was expecting, I was kind of half expecting you to move infantry up there, but then again, I forgot it's it's snow, so you could your infantry really literally literally couldn't move that far. Yeah. Uh, okay, fire. Let's see. Oh, that was uh, <laughs> mine clearing. Dude, we're trying to hit what three squads trying to clear that mine over there? One. Yeah, two, three, four, actually four squads over there trying to clear those mines. Seven, ten, eight, <laughs> nine. Heavy uh, useless. It, it needs, needs four or less, and it just, there, it just, the uh, guys just refuse to do anything. Well, I guess it's tough to find them in the snow, huh? Mm hmm. Then, uh, okay, moving Stooks forward. Um, risking the mines, of course, not much of a risk for the tanks. Uh, I think we should not forget to tell the viewers how useless the trucks were in bringing up the motors. Uh, actually, the the motors were fine. It, it's great to put the motors in the vehicle as, as portage points, but in, in the infantry could advance quicker on their on their feet than staying in in the trucks. Ah, uh, that's that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah they ended up uh, uh, pacing the trucks. Yeah. Because the, the infantry could move three hexes a turn, and the uh, trucks could move two. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, the two or six, okay, so we're, ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, this is the Stug moving up. I had, after I had just completely panicked and moved everything to bad position, this, I fully expected to lose my uh, priest right here. I thought he was just going to take that Stug, run up onto the uh, level one hill. There'd be nothing the M10 could do about it, and just blow him away. But that, uh, that's not that's not what he did. But that's what I was expecting at this point. Um, but yeah, I I moved the the priest over where he is to try and shoot at uh, 
the level one hexes that um, George was using to get around the uh, the mines. Mm -hmm. And the M10, I, I have down here to try and keep you from moving too far forward. You're like, you, you, I mean, you can only shoot the BB6, but still, I figured okay, if I can keep you CC6 or something like that, then you then you're not shooting at my infantry, so CC6 was acceptable. But uh, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have moved them in the first place. So it was just. In Dumb. terms, in no, terms of really tactical great. retreats, you're a master at that, like the Germans were. Uh, um, and there's a suit tree. Okay, so you're doing what I, I perversely put the M10 there to stop. Okay, so he takes his two shots and bang. <laughs> he breaks his gun. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> This is where we had the debate as to whether uh, you need to uh, roll a one or two, or is it a one? Right, for a repair, yeah. For, should the Americans repair their main armament on a one or a two, like the rest of their equipment, or does it, uh, are they stuck with uh, just a one like the rest, like every other nationality? Mm -hmm. And debate continues. Ben. We, for the for the purposes of this one, we agreed that we'd keep it at one and, and we'd press on. Yeah. Um, okay, so George crashes through the trees again with no trouble. Um, and they're still trying to stay, I mean, they're trying to stay away from that 105, but you notice that you, George is getting, you're getting plenty of tanks down here into the into the valley and that's that's not good stuff for me. That's That's where I'm starting to get worried. Uh, let's see what happened here. You got, okay, uh, what's a burger broken? Okay, what did we have here? Oh, um, fire for effect. Right, minus one versus half track, zero versus infantry. Okay, yeah, we were not playing a plus two for the infantry in the half track. Um, let's see if it's going to mention normal infantry and LRG fire, right? Um, so artillery fire on, let's see, vehicles in the blast area are affected by only by KA results on the infantry fire table. Utilize artillery barrage for vehicles, right? Vehicles are not subject to a minus two modifier for moving the open. But passengers do receive the minus two detriment unless in a half track. Although morale check results on the infantry fire table do not affect vehicles, they do affect all passengers. Let's see, on morale, let's see, on low morale checks, the morale check results on the infantry fire table do not affect vehicles. They do affect all passengers except those on half track. Mm -hmm. Okay, half track passengers are affected only by the destruction of the vehicle. Tax for okay, go okay, ahead. There you go. Yeah, all right. So I didn't read that one far enough. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that was a big problem in this one. Well, mm. when do, if you get your uh, rematch, you'll be able to sail through with uh, with no trouble. Yeah, actually, I I'm un under the opinion that this game cannot be won by the Germans. I mean, not this game, but this scenario. But anyway. Yeah, well, I don't know. I didn't kill very many of your half tracks with, uh, and I killed one of your half tracks with artillery fire. The rest of it was just breaking your infantry um, with the artillery fire. And if there, if your stuff in half tracks is immune to artillery fire, then I'm host. You're going to be on board three in no time. Mm. Uh, you just you just sail across the hills and come right up. It's no big deal because I mean I got nothing to stop you. Uh, if the arty can't do it, and arty just it needs a KIA, and pff, that just doesn't happen very often. Down, 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 okay. He's moving. Uh, FFE versus yeah, another FFE roll eleven. Yeah, it doesn't do any good. Uh, moving forward, moving forward, still crawling up the road there. I don't think he's supposed to be concealed. There he is. Okay. I don't know why you moved those half tracks up. Well, I thought that eventually the leaders would catch up to them one way or another. But uh, had we been playing with the rule that they could uh, stay in their half tracks, I would have left them there. Oh, they still would have been way back there if, if uh, yeah, if they couldn't do, if, they, if the uh, broken units had stayed on board. 
Well, and recall, most of those broken units were from artillery fire, so they should have been broken in the first place. In fact, all of those broken units were from, from, from artillery fire. So none of them should have been broken in the first place. You mm -hmm. should have, you, basically all of your half-tracks, except the one I killed, are intact right now. Exactly, but then uh, according to that rule, my, uh, my half-track passengers were not subject to a morale check. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Right, yeah. uh, right now, apart from the, the apart from the wreck in a in uh, was it uh, I four there, where I got a KIA with my artillery. Exactly. All the rest of all the rest of this broken stuff, uh, or I'll be, all of your empty half tracks are because of artillery fire breaking the guys and them abandoning it. Exactly. Which, which wouldn't have happened. Exactly. And you say that uh, that uh, so. And, that's yeah. I mean, you you right now, every you said that you wouldn't be able to move your half tracks closer because the guys, um, get the broken guys don't have to leave the uh, half track. Mm. You wouldn't have had any broken guys to begin with. It wouldn't have been an issue. Exactly. So it's, but, it, 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 that's why I said all of your your half tracks would be probably where they are right now, but they'd have troops on board because there's that artillery is not going to go stop them. And this one, yeah, I was I mean, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. But no, I mean, if if they're basically immune to artillery, just like they're pretty much immune to machine gun fire in, in scenario seven, then there's no way to stop them. <laughs> they're, they're just going to sail right through the hills, and you'll be able to you'll be on board three and clear in mines and all that kind of stuff in no time. Exactly. So the leader, the nine Wetzenberger, should have been <laughs> instead of being broken in that in those in that wooden hex or in that uh, wooden building, he should have been with his half-track up here. And the same goes with the other leaders, the other troops. Yeah, well, no, but for the record, uh, Wetzelberger would still be dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he would still be dead. Yeah. All right, where are we going? Oh, we must, let's see, um, so many just... Uh, I don't know the FFE. Oh, this is your you're, you're rolling into the FFE, right? Mm -hmm. So we're resolving that right now. And I uh, actually got a KIA. Yeah. With a four. Yeah. Uh, a hundred hundred millimeter uh, artillery. This, I only did. I didn't get much of that, but the little bit I got was was quite effective. Um, okay, and then yeah, these are the guys that. Still moving their way forward from the, the your mortars are really screaming once they reach the road. Mm -hmm. Then we're at uh, turn. Let's see. Okay, axis advance phase, uh, axis route phase, axis advance phase. Oh, I'm sorry, advancing fire. <laughs> Rosenberg goes berserk. Yeah, there you go. That's what you need. Berserk six one. Yeah. And it's allied player turn. I. Built a roadblock. That's why, I, again, I was from the very beginning of the game. I had one of my eight four sevens in uh, on board one, uh, building a roadblock on uh, to try and block the road so that uh, for the final Goddard Ummer, um I had the wires out there to stop the infantry. Uh, we got a roadblock to cut off one of the roads. I've got the anti tank guns here. Uh, it, in, in the buildings that shoot right down the road, they're going to hit that hit that EE five. Um, everything trying to come through there. I've got it all set up. This, this final bastion against letting those guys off the board, and it never got to that. Cool. Um, I don't know, but that, then I think you know, maybe the maybe the problem with the half tracks had a lot to do with that. But I don't know. I don't know. Okay, and I'm trying to fix my main armament. No, of course not. Um, and the artillery requests, moving Johnson back down to attack the art, the EFV, got the half track again. Hill's going to spotting round, he's got nothing to shoot at. I'm moving stuff around randomly here. I moved, I moved one of the guys front that, went, that had been at the roadblock to the church. To try and give long range machine gun fire a la Hedgehog of PFs, but it's, he, that, that didn't come into play either. The range just range never never helped. Getting the half track out of the way, moving my M10. He's uh, 
trying, he's just trying to get away so he can fix his gun. Um, and, but well, you took your shot and missed, right? Yeah. Or no, do you, um. Yeah, I missed. Yeah. Adjacent and missed. Mm-hmm. There you go, going, getting brave like me and going through yeah. the woods. <laughs> didn't have a lot of choice, but yeah, I said, gotta get out of here. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to get away. I was trying to get away so I could fix you. Know, just live another day and get my, uh, just try and fix my, uh, fix my gun. Yeah. All right, so he'll takes off. And there, there was a, a big loss and an opportunity of, to fire on Hill instead of firing on the on the M10 with the broken armament. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't think you made the wrong decision. I think that's probably such a decision just about everybody would have made because the, the M10 was really the bigger threat. Hmm. And we put Hill there to do uh, more uh, artillery spotting because I need to get somebody down there who can, who can see the level ones on the far side a little bit better because at level two, that 490, hill 498 over there really messes up the, the line of sight from both the, the church and from Jones back there on board one, uh, or from, primarily from Jackson and the church down the road. So you want to you want to try and get uh, get somebody over here to see the the area behind 498, uh, right around where that roadblock is. Try to try to put some stuff in there. Still, you're kind of limited because it's still that's a lot of level one stuff. You, have, you basically have to try and put it um, on G3 and hope you can adjust. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, priest had moved back to where he was originally <laughs> because I realized the error of my ways. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah. um, that was wait, what was that last move? We just right there. That was running back down. Ah, uh, could you? Okay, got concealed, right? Well, he, yeah, he, he did concealed, right? Uh, yeah, okay. And we are at turn seven, axis rally phase. Okay, checking the radios, moving artillery requests around, moving an FFE onto his infantry in the building. Uh, Jones gonna try and put an artillery request down in case he moves his tank onto that level two hill to control the village. Uh, his, let's see. So there, okay, his half track moving again, moving towards town. Stug's moving into the village. Uh, and again, I really don't have a lot of stuff to deal with this. I've got the, the 105 priest who really has no business fighting tanks. He's supposed to be fighting half tracks and infantry. Uh, and the and the broken, uh, broken M10, which, oh God. See, uh, I moved up the half track because the uh, AFV armored fighting vehicle passengers are going to board a, a, a half track where they can afford more protection. I knew there was a method to my madness. I just wasn't sure why I was. <laughs> <laughs> so you moved the half track up to take the tank passengers. Okay. Exactly. All right, that makes sense. As long as the, as long as the half track is available, why not? Yeah. yeah. Okay, George checked LOS. George is shooting. George is shooting. Stug, 105. Oh, let's see. Okay. Uh, oh, you let's see. You must have moved into a tree. Yeah, you moved into a tree. Okay. No, he didn't move into a tree. What are you doing? Why are we rolling there? That's why we put these things in the logs so we know why they're rolling. Mm -hmm. George Stug, one of Roadblock CA. Uh, roadblock CA up. George Stuke 3105CA5 moves 2 2I2, right? 2K4 after rolling a die. Okay, I don't know. Okay, okay. and infantry 
three. Okay, deciding not to go uphill. And the snow movement really caused all kinds of. I mean, you all, you even the infantry just has to stay on the road because just things move so slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, I just you lost a truck on the mines. Right? Okay, that's good. The mines did. They didn't do much, but they did some. I got I got what I paid for. <laughs> um, but you can see, yeah, once you're once your uh, um, mortars got out of the snow, there they were just cooking right along. Hmm. And let's see, all right, defensive fire created in three x five. That's me shooting at. That, that's my priest shooting at the. Tank that moved up to level two hill, uh, and he needs an eight to hit. Holy oh, hit, and then a five four. No, because he needs a, I think a three to kill on the front of a of a tank. Mm -hmm. so, and here I was just putting a tank, uh, putting a bazooka on the side of the board there, so I could keep track of what the ranges are that I need to keep an eye on. Um, okay. Okay, advancing fire charge is now going to shoot at my uh, M10 again and misses. Mm -hmm. That M10 let a sharp life apart from <laughs> breaking his gun and, and basically being worthless for the rest of the game. He got a kill and then that was it. The rest of the game he didn't do anything. And the priest leads an exciting life, but uh, the M10, not so much. I was petrified of your mines. Petrified. Of the mines? Mm -hmm. um, they they, uh, they did what they are supposed to do, and I mean, that wasn't much, but that's it. Okay, that's the end of that log file. Uh, that brings us to, let's see, it's... Turn seven axis close combat phase. So we have turn seven allied and uh, turn eight, I think. So we have one more. We should have one more log to go, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh, load up the log. We'll pause again. Okay. All right. We're back to uh, recording again. Hey, now the axis of uh, the allied uh, allied rally phase. Turn seven. Um. That's, I think this this may be oh, yeah, fixing the guns. Now, fixing the guns was not something that I had any luck with in this one. Uh, nope. And rally temp. Uh, do, 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 do you, you were as bad at fixing your troops as I was at fixing my guns. You had a lot of problems rallying some of these guys. Huge problems. Let's see. And the radios are all good, as usual. Um, Hill is right. This is where uh, I changed to. Uh, yeah, he had moved to tank up onto a level three hill, and basically could see the entire board right into me. You could see, could, you, could, you could see my entry hex for all of my reinforcements. So I had to shoot the first one, and all the rest of them <laughs> backed up behind it. And, I mean, yeah, the range would have been extreme, granted. But I mean, once you get above, what is it, 36, they, they, they don't increase it anymore. And they don't give you a maximum range that I know of. So can we, while running the log, can we see the, the range or that? Or, or forget it, don't worry about it. Can we see the range checks? or? It's, no, oh, it's I, fine, it's fine. I, I mean, well, you can zoom out. <laughs> it was a risk worth taking. It was a risk worth taking, and I didn't take it. Uh, well, you put that tank on the third level, so immediately I had, no, I, I know I have to do something about that. So I put the, uh, the only thing I had available was to put my uh, mortar, on board mortar on it. And uh, douse them with some smoke. <laughs> mm. The, uh, let's see, uh, okay, concealed, okay, he's not, cons <laughs> that's right, that was, and my, on another on board mortar direct fire smoke onto the hill, I have an escape plan for my priest, uh, but he ends up not taking it. Uh, Alright, so we have uh, prep fire created. Yeah, I, I decided, the, the, the priest decided that he was going to take a prep fire at the Stug 3 instead of trying to escape. 
I don't remember what the, the whole plan behind the smoke was to try and get the priest out of there uh, before he got killed. Now, all of a sudden, he's crazy. He's crazy brave. So. <laughs> Uh, let's see, tank out of the range 5, need 10 or less to hit, 7 hits, there we are, the 105 HE versus the Stu, with the, with a plus 1, I need a 3 or less to kill him, snake eyes again, this is, there, there are too many, there are a lot of snake eyes in this game, <clears throat> a, few, a, a few box cars too, obviously, but, the, uh, but yeah, there were a lot of, a lot of weird rolls in this one, um, alright, then, I'm moving some half tracks out of the way. Got to get keep these things off of the road so that the stuff moving in can uh, can get to the front quickly. There's the uh, <clears throat> M10 moving out. I know the Stu 3 can shoot at him, but that's why I put the smoke on the hill was to to mess up that shot, and that ended up working out. Uh, he needed to what the eight? He needed eight to hit. On you know, three dice, which that's that's I mean, not a bad shot, but it's still certainly not good. Not not a, not the eight that he would have had if I hadn't put that down. And if he'd hit him with that, if he'd hit him, he would have killed him. And Seventy-five on the rear of a of an M10 would have just you know blown him right up. Uh, okay, and oh, this is these are my. Reinforcements coming in. They're just going to zip along the top of the road. I, I look, I look at the road, and this is the only one that only makes you go sideways once, and that's for, from C5 to C4. Everything else is straight ahead, so I move everything that way as fast as possible. All right, yeah, here we go. Okay, DF tried defensive fire in 3DD2. Here we go. Uh, on the on the big hill there, or on the on the second level hill, and he's going to shoot at my concealed guys in the building, trying to clear a path. He hits. Uh, wait a minute. Two hit eight or less in the tree building, right? So why are we okay? We got three die rolls there. Uh, to hit and then fire for effect and then the machine gun. Okay, right. To, okay, right. To hit and then uh, right the effect. Okay, yeah, the 12 didn't do it and uh, the 10 was for the machine. Right, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you're checking the last thing. Okay. See, the tank on the hill already prep fired and missed. Yeah. On 2J4. Seven allied route phase. So turn seven allied route phase. Right, don't have any routes. He's advancing. I had a lot of trouble with the second level counters. I always do. Okay, Jones is moving his AR. Okay, I don't know why Jones is moving his AR. You know what? Oh, it's because that's where the roll put it, and it went out of his line of sight. Right. Now the Axis player turn, um, and it's Axis rally phase, and we have rally attempt in 2F3. Um, turn one, actually got one of those, okay. Fix, I'm gonna try and fix my main armament in... Uh, Broke. In S seven, right, and it goes. I get the six and break it. Isn't that great? <laughs> I mean, the priest has been living a charmed life, but uh, the uh, the M ten not so much. The radios are still all good. I mean, that I I find I think I, I really wasn't paying enough attention to those. I, I just. It's not like the other nationalities really got to worry about the radios. The Americans, the Indian radios usually work. You get spoiled. Um, all right. Jackson is moving his stuff around. 
crib fire. Okay, here we go. You're, you're trying, you're still, that's oh, right. No, so you can't, you can't see Hill. That's why I put him there. <laughs> <laughs> that from A6, you don't have line of sight to, to W6 because of the, the second first level Hill there. It's, and I, I completely, I forgot that just, just the same as you. I kept on forgetting that. That's the next board I'm going to build. Well, uh, this one here, uh, three? Or yeah, three? I'm going to finish two tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, and you're moving off of the hill. Okay. Um, right, defensive fire, yeah, I've got, I've got to take the defensive fire. That, I mean, I could I could have held it, but and there's he another twelve, yeah. And he breaks it again. Talking about bad luck, eh? So then he changes course and decides to go right at me and said, <clears throat> um, and the infantry moves into the half track, and now everybody's coming screaming down out of the hills. Here we go. Got unit decides to go and assault the hill to take my radio, which is brilliant. Uh, That's what they call assault movement in that, that squad leader. <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't have thought of that to do that myself, but it worked out worked out quite well. It worked out good. Uh, um, but yeah, now everybody's coming screaming out of the hills. Here we go. Things are starting to look ugly for the for the home team here. Do, 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 do. See. Everybody's moving along the road now. There's still choke points around here, but they seem to be they, they're around the first mine. They're uh, getting to actually is this where you uh, yeah this is where okay, we're moving our uh, here we go. Okay, where are we here? Okay, so uh, defensive fire I have, I just happen to have that half track there to provide defensive fire. So he goes CE and uh, he's got a four minus two shot and fails. <laughs> of course. Uh, and let's see what else we got. Um, so you have my artillery landing on, let's see, I think it is your uh, broken troops. Okay. And most of them didn't make it. Uh, let's see. Normally I wouldn't have bothered with them, but they had a leader with them, so they might have rallied. Mm -hmm. Then, let's see, defensive fire. Where are we going? Oh, I was going to shoot at a tank that it wasn't there anymore. <laughs> Defensive fire to turn eight. Axis advancing fire. Okay, <clears throat> advancing fire. The guys who leapt out of the half track and are going to assault hill. Fire and this. So now we go to let's see. Uh, let's go route phase. Route phase. Or this is a uh, advanced phase, right? Mm -hmm. We did it. There was no. There was no route phase. Um, we're doing the advanced phase. Um, you know, actually, I could have routed Hill out of there. You could have broken him. him. Voluntarily. Hmm? Well, you could have voluntarily broken him. Yeah, I could have voluntarily broken him and routed out of there, but that probably wouldn't have done me any good. He would have been DM. He would have been stuck because mm -hmm. he would have had to go to those trees. It's saying uh, he could have gone under the half track to U seven. Uh, that, you know, that would have been about it. I think the half track going under the half track counts as cover. Uh, uh, yeah, he could he could have routed the U seven voluntarily broken. I mean, they didn't want to abandon the radio, but there's a choice between abandoning the radio or losing your uh, losing your leader. Probably should have left the radio, but there you go. So we get close combat. It's four to one. Yeah, so. Uh, See. Oh, that's right. First in close combat, we got to do the artillery accuracy, and Jones actually shacks it in that job. I think it's what the second one out of <laughs> several dozen attempts. 
or what it probably does it in a half attempt. Um, then, uh, okay, in W8, our close combat, right, 4 to 1. So the German needs a 9 or less. The Americans a 1 to 4, needs a 3, but he's a minus 1 leader, so he needs a 4. So we both, so he needs a 9 or less, I need a 4 or less, and here we go. George rolls a 4, and I'm dead. And I roll a 4, and he's dead. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, how about that? And that's the end of that log file. Okay, we're coming to the conclusion. So I'll pause it one last time. Uh, okay, we're back. All right, we're at the uh, turn nine allied rally phase. Let's see. Let's see, I did forgot to. Looks like oh, turn eight, turn eight allied rally phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Turn eight. Oh, that's right. That's right. Keep on forgetting the allies go second. I'm not used to that. Now see that I see turn eight axis close combat, and I expect nine allied ra rally to be to follow, and it just doesn't work that way all the time. So I'm trying to fix my gun again. Uh, seems like that's a constant theme for my tanks in this one. Uh, you're trying to rally in two F three. Uh, no, let's see, uh, actually, yes, you did rally with Whistleburger and I, okay. Um, I'm checking my radios. Jones breaks his radio. That's uh, the thing with the Americans. They're either in contact or their radio is broken. Uh, so you need an 11 or less to maintain radio contact and a 12 <laughs> breaks your radio. Okay. Uh, now, replacing the smoke because again, I th I'm going to try and uh, try and save that priest. I mean, he sat he sat a turn too long. I'm pretty sure he shouldn't have taken that prep fire. He's still got to get out of there. So we're putting the smoke back down there with our direct fire mortar there. Our other mortar has gone away because the spotter is now radioless. Yeah, there's a good, let's see, that's him putting this one. Now putting Artie, this is my onboard Artie, yeah. This is my onboard Artie shooting at his broken leader because I don't want him to rally. And another, another snake eyes. And that, that happens just way too often here. Uh, we do now we roll to see if the building catches fire. Need a roll the roll the attack again. If we get a second KIA, the building's on fire. If not, it's just uh, rubble. And it's rubble. Uh, let's see. What else do I get here? Yeah. I, um, I was still kind of surprised all your tanks bunched up in the middle like that. If I could have got my already spun out of there, I, I, I one good radio spotter would have been able to put uh, you know, what what a one fifty down on those guys. That would have been. Yeah, but one of your radios broke, and the other guy got eliminated in close combat. Uh, right, but you didn't know that when your when your tanks took up that nice hex, uh, hexagonal formation there. Mm. Uh, and then, so, yeah, it's so not only up in the back is the broom bars and the trucks, right? Yep. Okay, so we're moving the priest out of the way just to get him out of the way. Um, and he didn't get shot at, which surprised me. He, I, I really thought you were going to shoot him uh, one shot right in the butt, and he would have been dead. At that point, um, well, it's already in turn nine. And uh, my focus was on the infantry. I should have taken more shots on your infantry rather than taking shots at uh, armored fighting vehicles with their main armament malfunctioned. Uh, let's see, my M10 within the M10. Oh, this is my new M10. My no, that's that's the broken M10. Mm -hmm. And there's my defensive uh, M3. 
Okay. I've decided now at this point to redeploy the uh, 666 here that I have with the bazooka because, uh, frankly, I'm exp I'm gonna. I figure I'm gonna have to bring in <coughs> heavy artillery onto X2 because it's about the only. That's the best spot for me to see. I can see it from all three, from originally from both of my major artillery calling centers. I can see X2, so I wanted to evacuate those two hexes there. Um, pull back to uh, V1 and X3 so I could show the heck out of X2 and any vehicles trying to come through there. So, and, and oh, by the way, I wanted to get somebody with a bazooka over to the, uh, the hill um, in case one of his half-tracks decided to sneak around the, the flank again. Not that, it, not that his bazooka was going to do any good against any of his tanks, uh, but if the but if your uh, but if your um, half tracks came down there, I could have toasted those. Um, let's see, page then. Okay, Thompson's going to join them, and here comes the cavalry. I want him. I I put him here to cover the intersection, but that ended up being a really bad position. I thought he could see a little bit farther than he can, but he just this that's a really bad position to put him in. That's a lesson learned. I don't know where I should have put him, but that definitely wasn't it. <clears throat> I'm happy with the other positions I got for my tanks, so though. Those were good. And they were there basically to cover the intersection and uh, the second level hill, and w which they did. Um, and uh, to cover the uh, trees, I think. Is it one of those guys? I think one of those guys and hit uh, X7. I think, I think one of these squares here, could, or one of these hexes here could hit X7 if you had rolled up uh, to X7 again to try and take your machine gun back or take my radio. And the, uh, the ones going to the other hill are there to cover against X4. And uh, let's see, what was the other hex? The other hex you to shoot at X4 and the intersection. Yeah. Radios have no captured use, correct? I don't think you can use capture radios, no. No, you can't. It wouldn't make sense if you could. They'd have the wrong, uh, wrong crystals in them. They wouldn't be set to the right frequencies. Hmm. <clears throat> Necessary, probably. Um, yeah, and at this point, I have no idea what I'm going to do with the 105 because he's. Let's see now. What is this half track doing? It was going to, oh yeah, I'm sending him back for Metro. Right. Finally decided it was time to go back and get Metro. Um, now that he's finished with his roadblock, I pick him up. I'll bring another radio up. And now that it's broken, I might as well relocate it. That's all stacked up. They're ready to go. Where advanced phase is now axis rally phase. I'm trying to fix my main gun and no. Rains roll over here. Okay. Um, let's see, you went down. I fixed, oh, fixed my main armament. I rolled a two. Should have fixed it, but I didn't. Then. With the radio, I rolled another two, and the radio's fixed. American equipment fixes on two. <laughs> yep. That's what the counter says. Um, let's see. Okay. And the radio contacts are good. Um, we're moving. Let's see, I'm placing artillery request on the hill. Yeah. Uh, Medro right now, where he, he can't see much but he can see that uh, see that second level hill so I'll put that there and then when he moves forward in his half track uh, I can probably get that down onto the, the tanks in the level one or the level zero valley down there between two and three it's hopefully start hurting some tanks uh, or at least dissuade them from moving any farther forward hmm. Yeah, I didn't have OS to that hex. Okay. Prep fire right. You don't have LOS. So. 
we both kept forgetting that that extra level one was causing us all kinds of problems down there. Here's your half track moving back. kind of what I expected and that's why I put guys there to defend against it uh, they didn't do any good though uh, this one here yeah I, had definitely, I put a guy over there specifically to shoot at that hex because there was very limited very limited hex hexes that can they can actually see that hex uh, but that's not the one it's actually the other one there you go <laughs> but yeah I specifically put that there to to cover that hex but did he do his job? No. <laughs> of course not. Pressing the wrong button there. And then you have the floor moving up here. And you know, the M let's see, you've got to take take the defensive fire shot, right? I mean that's why he's there is to cover that kind of stuff. And does he do his job? Uh well he hits it. That's part of his job. But uh, it doesn't kill it. That's not part of the job. Um, and another stu rolling up onto the hill. And these are, I'm not shooting at them right away because they're both reaching there with what, 11.5 and 12. So I, I can always shoot at them later if they're not moving farther on. Uh, Broombar hits the mine and as usual doesn't do any good. Then he moves out and bang, another snake eye. And that's where I seated the game because there is no way I could move any more <clears throat> troops with any meaningful transport up, up uh, any further. Yeah, you just have too many, uh, too many wrecks on the board. Um, and, uh, and not enough vehicles for your, uh, for your infantry. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that, I, well, I mean that that uh, the change that uh, with the. Uh, Artillery, not I mean, basically the uh, the half tracks being invincible, will definitely change things. Hmm. That definitely changed things a lot. Yeah, the board would have looked a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, a lot bit different. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so overall, we can... I think my my defensive scheme worked. It needs some it needs some tuning. I I now have a better appreciation for. The, uh, well, I think I have a better appreciation for the time frames involved in this game, for the, so for the time phasing of the stages of the defense. Uh, I don't know what the uh, not having kryptonite to stop the half tracks is going to do to me, though. I mean, that's going to that's gonna speed things up a lot. So the, those defenses I had a little bit farther forward, um, I might keep because they might actually get engaged early enough to, to matter with you moving your half-tracks across the board uh, with impunity. Um, yeah, I, they'll, they'll just be blitzing right across, and I will need some people up front to try and take care of that. Yeah. Uh, but that the limitation of only six squads per board really is a pain. That's a real pain. I guess that's how it was in... Um... In uh, the real Battle of the Bulge, uh, the Americans got caught off guard. Uh, well, yeah, off off guard is one thing. So off guard and spread out, on, like the 101 in on D Day, is <laughs> something different. <laughs> I'm surprised I made it that far. So, it's uh, only the second time in my lifetime that I played this scenario. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, uh, and but and you said that you would uh, crush the. I mean, I still don't understand how you could have stopped the entire German effort right there in those three hexes. Well, look what you've done. Where's the main? Where's the main uh, um, hindrance for the Germans? It's on board two. No other board. Uh, yeah. Right. There you go. There you go. My my uh, accomplishment was not any different as the Germans. I mean, as the Americans. Mm -hmm. 
And I was a, uh, an average teenager when I had played this uh, scenario back way then in the late 70s, early 80s. Well, okay. Uh, all right, well, overall, uh, it looks like it's going to be a fun scenario. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely, I think, a bit one-sided. You definitely have to be, um, enjoy uh, uh, skinny your teeth defense and basically uh, brute force attacking. I mean, that's, that's what it's set up for. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, no, it's not going to be one of my favorite scenarios. I don't know <laughs> how many times I'll play it again, but... <laughs> I guess that's why they redesigned it for our advanced squad leader, and there's not too many uh, ARRs on it on the internet anymore. Um, yeah, I noticed one of the things that they did when they... They only used uh, two boards for the uh, ASL revamp of this. Yep. I think they only used two and three. Yeah, something like that. Um, which, so, which would kind of make more sense. Should we conclude here or continue uh, to record our conversation about scenario eight? Or but, no, this, this, this should be fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, for the recording, should we conclude the recording now uh, or and then talk offline about scenario eight, or we can continue talking? Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you, I, as far as I'm concerned, that the recording, I mean, we're, we're done about the game unless you have more to say. Okay, I think it was a great scenario. It was a great game. Always a pleasure playing against you, Bob. And we'll end the recording here until uh, next time. And our next uh, scenario will be scenario eight. Okay. Hold on.